What's up, everybody? Jacob here with Mystery Arts Inc., taking you further, faster, in the Mystery Arts through index product reviews, resources, and random rants. As always, I'm your host, Jacob. Thank you for tuning in again. Today, we're going to talk about a little personal subject, and by that, I mean myself. A lot of people want to know where did I come from? Do I work for Penguin? You know, how did I get my start? Do I actually have any skill outside of mentalism? Or I mean, it's another mentalist that can't do card tricks, that's why I do it. And we'll get all into that right now. So to start this story out, you can imagine me at the earliest ages I can remember. There was a magic shop. Two of them, actually. One was in Pigeon Forge in Dollywood, ran by a man named David Talent, who put on a show every single day. It was the same show. He did it probably ten times a day, doing a pitch show, selling dancing canes, uh, a rascal of raccoons, which a version of Rocky Raccoons. And various other products. He sold gags such as the Evil Eyes. Then the shop in Gatlinburg, Tennessee was the one I thought was really interesting because that one I thought was real magic. I thought for sure it was because every year on a different floor I thought I just teleported there and that was how it worked. And unfortunately I found out later by getting to know David Mann, the proprietor, that the landlord was just an asshole. That's an asshole for those who don't understand the bleep. It was really Matrix magic that got me going. When I went to Matrix, I would see either David or one of his students doing the hot rod stick, demoing different tricks, um, Svengali decks, visible decks, the whole nine yards. And I used to buy up a lot of, remember the scotch and soda was one of the ones I thought was just the best out of the best that I bought. Uh, it was phenomenal. And every year I'd go and I'd buy about hundred to hundred dollars in tricks. I'd go home, I'd learn them, I'd show them to friends and family. And I must not have been, I apparently was not very good according to them until about the age of seven or eight when I started getting into something a little deeper. And what I ended up getting a hold of was Daryl's Card Revelations Volume 2 in an interesting way. It's kind of funny because I still have my copy actually. It's right there. And I used to watch this literally hundreds of times a week. It's even signed by Daryl himself, if that camera focuses incorrectly. And I met Daryl before his unfortunate passing uh, earlier last year. And I remember watching this just time and time again and really absorbing all the information inside. Let's go ahead and put that back. When I started learning the sliding hand card magic, I really wanted to learn things to be able to cross. I learned everything off that VHS. Grew with me and stayed with me until about high school when I fell out for a while. I uh, stopped performing until one day someone said, well, why don't you do any tricks anymore? I want to see something. And it really hit me hard. And I realized I'd lost something very important and deep that I used myself to make friends for so long. I ended up getting back into it with a vengeance. I started learning to do hypnosis after seeing the amazing Tom Silver on television. I failed thousands of times until I got my first induction. And then from there it was like, I got everybody. I literally had hypnotized half of my school by the time I'd left. Fell into rough times. I began getting into what most bad kids get into, and unfortunately at one point actually almost entirely ruined my life, and did a three-year program in only one year to wipe the slate clean. During that time, I did my first TED Talk. I started really getting into mentalism about age 17 or 18 and stopped doing as much card magic, started exploring more of that. I thought there was just all psychological forces and things, but only things that work. I thought they were 100%. Most of the common delusions we have when we're young, starting into mentalism and wanting to do what we see Darren Brown do on television. It was a very rough transition, and for a lot of years, I just was absolutely horrible. When I got to Penguin Magic, finally, I was basically told one day going into the local magic store, hey, do you know Penguin Live's filmed here? After seeing the Patrick Redford lecture, I was mind blown. And I walked in, my first one was Paul Draper, and seeing his lecture on readings, where I met Dan Huffman, who's unfortunately recently passed as well, Sean Dunn, and a lot of other lovely folks that work over at Penguin that have 
become my friends. I used to make time every single week, every Sunday to start, I would be at Penguin Live. I think I've seen during my six years going at least three to four hundred magic lectures. They were all just phenomenal. Problem is, seeing too much magic is still seeing too much magic. And at the end of the day, you kind of need a break from it, which is where I'm at now. Through the years going to Penguin, I never worked for them. I never had a job with them. I helped them out whenever I could. I'd run their bar for their public shows. I'd take their lectures around. Uh, I would do interview segments with them when they needed somebody to fill in that had an expertise in mentalism. And I'd appear on numerous projects with my friends. And it was really great. I can't think of a better honor than being on projects with people like Peter Turner with Bob Cassidy on his last recorded video for the Q&A project asking him questions about what if. It was really an honor. And during that time I did professional shows. I did quite a few corporates. I made quite a bit of money doing it on the side, but I was still very impoverished. Living paycheck to paycheck. Sometimes I've been getting paychecks, unemployment, a whole string of just bad things happening in my life. And feeling like I've screwed up, succumbing again to some of the problems I had in my youth with alcohol and substances. Really, the only thing that kept me going, kept me constant, was the mentalism, was the magic. It was about that time I started this show, Mystery Arts Inc. I remember I did it on a HP laptop with maybe a 4, 480p camera, a 460p camera that just was standard definition. It looked horrible. I didn't have any knowledge of editing, didn't have any camera knowledge. I had done very brief bits of editing back in school that were relatively okay, but shot with point-and-shoot cameras and looked like crap compared to the stuff I'm producing today. It was really, really amazing that so many people were willing to help me. I interviewed the likes of Ken Dine, Aaron Alexander, Timon Krauss, Fraser Parker. All these people began collaborating with me and becoming my friends, and I got regular contact with them via Skype, Facebook, and that leads me up until today where now for the last couple of years I've been relatively okay. I've been staying afloat and really doing more. I think the biggest transition was realizing that I want to do things not for myself but for my children and for my for their future and helping instill a legacy in them. My legacy is not going to matter. My kids legacy though needs to be absolutely astounding and amazing and I want to provide for them. I never want them to have to do what I did as a kid. My mom still doesn't even know this. I used to, she used to give me money to go eat. I didn't think it was enough, so I'd go to the coffee shop on the side of the street and do card tricks for people that went by to get extra money to eat a little bit more as a child. I don't want my kids to have to do that, but I do want them to have the spirit of signing their own checks, much like I'm getting to the point of doing now. So that's essentially where I'm at now. And now I'm luckily in this lovely home. I live in Dublin, Ohio. I go to Penguin occasionally. I try not to expose myself too much anymore. I used to read 10 books a week. I now read about two, typically, or one if I can help it. I'm so busy between this and a day job that I have as well. It makes it really, really hard to devote all that time anymore. What's next? What's the future? The future, of course, is this. You, my viewers, Mystery Arts, Inc., growing it and turning it into something amazing expanding out into other vlogging categories, video production, product releases, and helping all of you find the people that I found were so amazing. I want to give all the opportunities I can. I don't want anybody to have to struggle as much as I did. And I want people to get the attention they deserve. That being said, I think the biggest thing I can impart onto all of you is Always move forward, never let your situation dictate your circumstances, and vice versa, never let your circumstances dictate your situation. I think that going forward, you're going to see growth, you're going to see opportunities spring up, and I hope I can pass that along to you. And I want to take, thank you very much for taking the time to watch and listen to my story and getting to know who I am. Thank you again for watching Mystery Arts Inc. Please do subscribe down below. Hit that like button if that's your prerogative. Share if you found something of real value here. And please tune in next time. I can't wait to see you. And I really do appreciate all of your support and your efforts to help grow this channel. Thank you very much. Jacob Smith, signing off.